Have you ever brought a knife to a gunfight? Or maybe sometimes you had to shoot from the hip or to stand your ground. And sometimes, of course, it's time to bite the bullet and bury the hatchet. Could you understand what I'm talking about? If not, then stay tuned, because this is Business English Idioms for War. There's lots of idioms that we use that are kind of war-related. So we'll go through several of them, and maybe you'll learn something. Stay tuned. I'm Timothy Barrett, and this is the 4 Business English Rundown. This is the show for people all over the world who want to improve their professional communication skills in English. This is Business English Idioms for War, Part 3. Speak softly and carry a big stick. So this is usually attributed to President Theodore Roosevelt, who was president uh, in the United States around the turn of the, the 20th century. And this is how he described his foreign policy. You know, that he didn't talk a lot, but if he did, then people would listen. Arguably, the, the U.S. is kind of at, at the other end of it now, speaking a lot, but not having a very big stick anymore. Um, but, you know, to speak softly, but carry a big stick. I'm not going to say a lot, but when I do, you better listen, because I can be dangerous. But I'm not going to use it a lot, which makes it even more dangerous, right? To bite the bullet. So I think it wasn't until the early 20th century or maybe late 19th century before medicine doctors had invented anesthesia. So up until that time, if a soldier was injured on the battlefield, they were wounded, uh, oftentimes the surgeons would just you know, cut off a leg, cut off an arm. I mean, there wasn't a lot that they, they could do. They didn't have antibiotics or antiseptics or anything like that. Whatever surgery or operation the doctor was going to do, the soldier was awake or the sailor was awake. You know, like, so what would they do? Sometimes they would have like a strap of leather that they would bite on, or sometimes they would say they would bite the bullet. So you know, they'd give them a bullet that they would put in their mouth and kind of bite down because the pain was so unbearable of the, of the surgeon doing whatever the surgeon was doing, maybe taking off a limb, something like that, severing a limb. If you haven't watched our video on sever, this would be a good time to go check that out the doctor might sever a, a limb, sever the leg or sever the arm. That would be excruciatingly painful for the soldier, of course, so they might bite down on that bullet. And there are reports of like the bullet actually like, you know, basically denting, you know, having an impression of the, of the soldier's teeth on it, you know, because it was such force, which is kind of crazy to think about. So what does it mean today? Well, today it means, you know, doing something that you don't want to do. Kind of, we might also say, face the music. You know, so, okay, I made a mistake, but you know what? I got to bite the bullet and go tell my boss about it. Or I got to face the music and go tell my boss about it. I'm going to bite the bullet and just do it, get it done. And it could be my mistake, or, or maybe, you know, I'm being blamed for it or, or whatever, you know, but I've, I've got to bite the bullet. I've got to do something that I don't want to do. Or it could be something else, like, you know, gee, I should have bought something last year, you know, bought a house last year when the prices were, were at this level, but now they're up at this level. But you know what? I think next year they're going to be even higher, so I'm going to bite the bullet and, and buy it now, you know, even though I, I regret I didn't buy it before when the prices were lower. But it, I think it's going to be worse later, so I got to bite the bullet. So to do something unpleasant. Close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. So... Horseshoes is a game, like an outdoor game that you play with a horseshoe and you throw it and you try to put it on a stake, you know, so, so it goes into the hooks around the stake. Now, in, when you play horseshoes, even if you don't hook the stake, you get it close, you know, I think it's the, the whatever horseshoe is the closest at least gets a point. So close does count in horseshoes. In other sports, close, of course, doesn't count. If you're shooting at someone and you're close, it doesn't count. But with a hand grenade, it does count. You know, hand grenades will go off. They will cause uh, great bodily harm to anyone nearby. So close is good enough. So we'll say close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. So in modern everyday English, when would we use this? Well, you know, gee, I, I was close. I almost made the sale. Great, but close only counts with horseshoes and hand grenades. The fact that you are close to making the sale or you are far from making the sale, in, at the end of the day, it doesn't make a difference, right? You didn't make the sale. 
keep your powder dry. So if we go back, uh, you know, 200 years or, or more, we had muskets where they didn't have, you know, bullets as we have them today. They would have the projectile, you know, maybe in one bag, and then they'd have another bag of powder. So they'd have to load the, you know, musket with both. But if the powder gets wet, it's useless, for, at least for right now. So how do we use that in the modern everyday English or business English context? It means you know, even though we have powder, you know, even though we could say something or do something against someone, you know what, maybe now is not the best time. Maybe we need to choose our battles. So keep your powder dry. Don't attack now. You know, it's not the right time for whatever reason. Keep your powder dry and next time we'll be ready. Something similar is arrow in the quiver. So a quiver is, is basically the, the long canister where you store the arrows. A, a, an archer might put them on the back. So they shoot one arrow, then they pull out the next, and then shoot that one, etc. cetera. Uh, and so to have an arrow in the quiver means I have more ammunition, kind of like I've kept my powder dry. I'm ready in, in case you know, it goes to war, in case we need to do something. So both are kind of like, okay, hold on, you know, don't shoot yet. Let's wait you know, when our time is right, but keep your powder dry, be ready, and you know, keep an arrow in the quiver, be ready. Lower your sights. So lower your sights you know, literally would mean like maybe we're, we're shooting too high, we need to lower the sights, you know, otherwise we're not hitting our target. In business English or everyday English, it would mean you know, maybe we're aiming too high. So you know what, I want to sell that $10 million contract to this company. Whoa, 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 you need to lower your sights. They've never even made a contract with us. They're not gonna give us a $10 million contract as our first contract, but maybe they'll give us that you know, $1 million contract or a $500,000 contract. You need to lower your sights, lower your expectations. You know, I expect to get this position or this payment you know, in my new job. Whoa, 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 that's, maybe that's not realistic. Lower your sights, and maybe you'll get that position or, or that salary or that sort of thing. So to lower your sights, have more realistic expectations. All right, hopefully these business English idioms for war have been helpful for you. If they have, then time to conquer that like button and make it ours. If you enjoyed this video, check out some of our other videos. You might like them even more. Work hard today and enjoy tomorrow. Mm -hmm.